Hello everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel for this Distress Oxide colour combination series. So today we're looking at carved pumpkin. We're now up to the C's, we're working through alphabetically. Uh, we've been through lots of different colours already and I'm so glad so many of you are enjoying the series. So carved pumpkin is a beautiful orange colour. Um, it's almost a soft orange actually, but it's so, oh, given the name, it's so perfect to use. Um, for of course Halloween but orange can be used in so many different ways so I'm not actually going to do Halloween combinations today just so that you can see how we use this differently um, because orange I always considered a Halloween color or a fall color as well of course so I'm going to be using the oxide here rather than an ink I do have lots of inks but my preference and I've been asked this a lot are oxides because they're creamier uh, I feel they blend better as well. I think the colours are stronger on more materials. So inks are beautifully strong colours on um, lots of, uh, obviously white card stock as your general rule, but lots of others. But I find these work so much better on things like craft card stock, even black card stock, the colours show up beautifully, whereas they don't with an ink on those darker card stocks. So it's just giving you more versatility with the oxides. So there you go, you can see it's got quite a yellow base to it, the carved pumpkin rather than a red. I mean, it's just beautiful, it's, a, it's really a lovely orange. Now, let's go jump straight in, first of all, to our two colour combination with this one. So just cleaning and drying my mat. And I'm going to go typical with this one, um, yellow into red. And I'm using abandoned coral. It's sort of a, a pinky red as well. So it's a little bit different. We're not going sort of fire engine red with this. But first of all, squeezed lemonade. So let's pop this, this end. Now, and again, a lovely bright color. I'm looking forward to getting around to doing this one. If you're new to this series or new to these videos, um, you'll find that you've got all the Distress Oxide colors alphabetically up to the C's already with videos done for you. So what I did there is I filled in the white of my cardstock first of all to make sure I had nice solid squeeze lemonade color. And then I just gently worked into the orange and just work up until really until you're not actually blending too much. But bear in mind, you want to keep some area solid orange and some area solid yellow. And now we have this lovely blend coming through. Now again, just wipe my mat because I don't want the yellow going into the pink. Wipe and dry because they do react with water. And there we go. And abandoned coral, like I say, this is a pinky color. So this is perfect for kind of a sunset. If you wish to do that, it's not a bright red, but you could then lead this into a red if you wanted the darker color on top. But I want to go quite tropical, um, kind of reminds me of a maybe a tropical drink, perhaps. <laughs> it's warm today here while I'm filming this. So, um, yeah, it does certainly remind me of a nice cocktail there. Look at that color. Isn't that just beautiful? Now, something else I wanted to quickly show you with Distress Oxides, an option for you is that you can stamp over your blending. So let me just wipe this off. And it's just an additional little tip for you um, for creating backgrounds that have some texture in them. So that's something I do with my brand textured is I look at layering and texture. So where I've got the abandoned coral there, I'm going to use a clear stamp and this is from the, oh, it's from the Wildflowers collection. And you can stamp with oxides. And I'm just going to go with the pink over the pink. So directly over the color that I've just done. And that just gives us the most beautiful, subtle texture in there. And then I'm going to take my, clean my stamp up. Usually I would do this with water, but just for the speed of this demonstration, I'm then going to go over the orange with the orange. I'm not going to do all of it because I then want to do the yellow as well. So I've just done half a stamp. I'm going to repeat orange over orange there. So it's going to be ever so subtle, but you can see that. And then again, a quick wipe. Lift off the excess where after you've wiped or cleaned your stamp, make sure your stamp's not wet. Otherwise you'll have a completely different reaction, which is a lovely reaction, but it's different to what you probably um, are looking for. I will in another video do the uh, water lifting technique with a stamp with you. So then stamping yellow over yellow 
and again extremely subtle there you see that actually more on the orange there I'm not sure if you can even see it on the camera but it is just there now I'd probably actually if I was doing this as a textured background I probably would actually take this orange down I think that yellow is a bit too pale so take this down to here there we go lift up any excess there there we go and then we've got the ink blending but we've also got that lovely subtle texture now have a play with all of your distress oxides with this technique because as you see with the lighter colors so the yellows doesn't work as well as it did for example with the abandoned coral where you get that lovely subtle texture but it is still obvious so have a play with that but let's put that to the side because we also want to do a full color combination so that's going to be with some brown so if you're making cards for men for example uh, teenage boys teenage girls even um, this is going to be perfect now I'm going to start off with salvaged patina which is actually one where you may think well that's blue that doesn't go into orange it is it's a bluey greeny color it's a minty blue it's a lovely bright color and it goes so beautifully into orange so I'm laying that down nice and solid and I'm just blend just fading it out so if you just do your fade by lifting up the pressure on your brush as you're blending um, as you work your way down don't reapply any more ink but just use what's already on the paper and on the brush and just lighten pressure so you get a lovely faded um, kind of blend or edge there now that is beautiful if you just want to do that on a card and you don't want to add a secondary color you can do that so let's wipe this off again dry it off again and let's go in with our carved pumpkin now now I always keep my brush and my first color that I've just put down available so easily accessible because very often I'll come back to that to help with the blending now the orange I'm going to put in just along that faded line there and it's a stronger colour than the salvage patina that we put down. So I'm very gently going to start blending that in. But I'm going to come back, as I said, I'm going to come back with the, what's already on the brush to help blend that any further. Because I don't want to put too much orange into the blue. Can you see where that's already edging into the blue? So once you've got your fade, you can lift up a little bit more, start at the bottom again with the blue and just blend that into the edge of that faded orange there for the perfect blend it's just a lovely I mean that's just a such a lovely color isn't it such a lovely blend combination um, one thing I don't tend to do is worry about the straight line but you notice here there's a little little bit of a, a wobble in the blend line you can soon sort that out There we go okay so then the next color in the combination that will go along these three and don't forget while I'm showing you these two sorry three and four color combinations you can easily just pick two colors or three colors that I'm doing you don't have to do the entire lot so for example on this one you could easily just blend the squeeze lemonade and the carved pumpkin or the carved pumpkin and the abandoned coral or with this one you could just do these two or you could just do the, the next three that I'm doing without the fourth or you could do the one two three that I'm doing you see what I mean so I'm hopefully giving you lots and lots of options for mixing colors even if it's not just focusing on the color that we've got here so the next one I'm going to be doing is rusty hinge this is edging towards a brown but it's still a bright orange and you'll see you've got more of a deep red in there so it's darkening that orange now I put that down <clears throat> I'm going to actually fade that out a little bit and I'm going to come in with my carved pumpkin and just reinstate a bit more of that orange so bringing that down a little bit more into the rusty hinge which is such a lovely color you know, rusty hinge also goes beautifully into salvage patina by the way there we go now I've got bright lights on here for the video and um, what happens as you can see here is anything that's wet will easily or shiny will easily reflect light so don't worry if at this stage your blending doesn't look perfect because if I I'm not sure if I can do it now there we go if I capture the light wrong you can see the wet where 
that ink hasn't yet dried um, but don't worry about that as soon as this is all dried it will be a lovely chalky matte color and your blending will look lovely so lastly i'm going in with ground espresso so a really deep dark brown and i'm kind of using this a bit in the way that we used the black soot um, when we focused on that color that's back on in the playlist that we've got on youtube so um, you can find the playlist and find all the colors that we've done so far so i'm just using it just to darken the very tip of this rusty hinge here so i just stuck my finger in there so there we go whoops let's pick that up carefully from the edge isn't that lovely so the carved pumpkin and rusty hinge actually they beautifully blend with a very subtle difference um, but I really like that and again should we just do an example of that lovely technique that I just showed you while I've still got my stamp here let's do it with rusty hinge all over Oh no, I said I'd show you the water. Let's show you the water, shall we? The water technique. So what you're going to need is uh, something like uh, a piece of plastic, which I'm just going to pop under here. So I've got two blend, I've got my small blending mat, my large blending mat. Now the blending mats, the distress oxides, all the brushes I'm using, uh, everything that I'm using is available um, in the description. You'll see links directly to where I purchase all my products from. Now I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to spritz it lightly on my mat. Just be aware of anything else around you. And with my stamp on my block, I'm just going to pick up some of that water, the same way as you would with ink, but you're just dampening the, uh, the stamp instead. And then I'm going to lay this, carefully lay this onto my ink. Now, I must admit, the water technique actually I find works better with distress inks than oxides. It still works with oxides, that's why I'm showing you, but it does work better with inks. So uh, if you have inks and you want to particularly do this technique, then I would go with using your inks for that. So I'm just holding this on for 30 seconds to a minute, I would say, and then lift it off. If you've got a stamping platform, uh, that's perfect. I haven't bought my ink because it's so big. It's easier to show you with a small acrylic block but if you've got a stamping platform i would do it with that and i would actually spritz the stamp um, and that way if you lift it up too early you can easily reposition and give it a little bit more time to react now once that's been on there for a little while leave take that off now it's not going to fully dry while your stamp while you're um already or still on there so it's only going to dry once you've lifted this up now i'm going to pick up some more water and do this again a bit further up. Now I have got a little bit of ink that's reacted here and lifted up on my stamp, but that's fine. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to go back in a bit further up and do the same. I'm going to hold this for 30 seconds. In the meantime, that bottom panel is starting to dry. Now this is again a bit like the uh, stamping that we did here. It's a subtle effect, but I think if you're looking at building texture, it's good to know all these techniques. So hold that for a little while and then lift that off give that a short while to dry and then I'm just going to do a little bit more at the top into the um, salvage patina we used here didn't we trying not to overlap your stamp it's better to actually have a gap than to overlap the stamped images you don't want it to kind of look messy so hold that you'll find different effects as well um, with to holding it on longer and so try it with all your different colors it might be worth if you've got a swatch book um for downloaded from my website linked below again if you've got your swatch book maybe just put a little dot of water on each color as you swatch it so you can see how what the reaction goes like and maybe do a dot of water that you lift off straight away and a dot of water that you leave on for a minute and then lift off so things like this or do yourself a completely different swatch book now just to speed this up, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to dry this because you'll see more of an effect once everything's dry. Okay, so there we go. That has all dried off. You can see the water reaction. I didn't have as much water here, but I can still see a little bit of texture in there. 
You could try going back in if you wanted, but I really like the look like that. And I'll definitely be using this particular strip or this technique, at least in these colors, on a project soon. So there's with the stamping with the alternate colors. If I turn it this way up, because that's the way we did it, you can see the abandoned coral on abandoned coral. You can see now a bit more the orange on the orange. The yellow on the yellow didn't really show, so we continued that orange down. But you've got two different ways of adding texture there to your projects. I really love the water lift effect. But essentially that is your colour combinations using carved pumpkin. So we had abandoned coral squeezed lemonade, which was these, and we had salvage patina rusty hinge ground espresso with carved pumpkin in the middle and that was this one. So I hope you've enjoyed this version of my colour combinations. Um, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up. Um, make sure you check out the playlist as often as possible. But if you're a subscriber, you'll get a notification every time I up upload a video. I'm aiming for a new video every um, day or two at least with a new colour um, and then of course afterwards you're going to eventually have 70 well hopefully 72 when um, Tim Holtz releases the last in the colour range um, 72 videos to refer back to time and time again but of course don't forget each and every one is going to have other colour combinations within it that you can look at so let me know if you've had a go at any of these and I'll see you again very soon for another Distress Oxide colour combination video.